today on Living by Faith. Feel so, so controlled and they feel so suppressed. They feel, I mean, all of these kind of things. You want the love of God. Ooh, this is strong upon me. I release the love of God into your homes in balance and in wisdom and in peace and in stature and in proper structuring. A few things I got to get you to see. Because, ladies and gentlemen, whether you have realized this or not, this ministry has entered into a rest like never before. Now, it's my prayer that you individually jump in on this so you can encounter what's happening here in your ministry. Red, you hearing what I'm saying? I need you to be able to duplicate this rest at your place. So that's, that's the entire agenda and, and objective of God to transfer every good thing that's up on this house to your house. Amen. You got that? Amen. I said every good thing that's up on this house up on your house. Yes. However, you have to embrace and also possess this duty and responsibility. It's a joy, joyful duty and responsibility. It's not like a grievous assignment that they give you at work or something. It's, it's a very joyful assignment I receive that you take the anointing that's up on this house. And that's why environments are so essential and hanging out in certain environments are so essential because whatever environment you hang out in, you'll soon become like. That's right. Because environment has been designed to have a silent influence on you to tell you you're supposed to be like this. Spend too much time in the crack house and you're going to have that pipe in your mouth. That, that's the environment. That's, 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 that's what people identify with. And I was telling the men on yesterday, whatever you identify with will affect your behavior. Because your behavior comes out of an identity connection or relationship that you can say, I'm a part of this. And once you become a part of whatever you identify with, whether it be a friend, you show me your friends, I can prophesy your future. Mm. I can tell you where you're going. And see, a lot of you are interested in your own empire. I know I am relative to the kingdom of God and building what he has established because the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God. My empire is within the kingdom of God and my duty and my right as a representative of the kingdom of God to show other believers and also the world who we are all about and what we are all about. That's right. The who is, I say the who is simply because the body of Christ is an organism. It is not an organization. Right. It's alive. We are an organism. Right. You got a hold of that? So it's important that you dwell and bask in this environment. And if you stay in it long enough and comply with it, you're going to become just like the environment you hang out in. And this is a very wholesome environment. It's a wealthy environment. It's, it's, it's a healing environment. I know for myself, it's a healing environment. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a pleasurable environment for all areas of our makeup, our, our spirit, our soul, and even our body. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Uh, and so, and so if, 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 if it's my job to conveniently, conveniently package this word or, or this environment in, in like a, have you ever had a meal at a place? I, I know I did. And I, I, I try to be a little more civilized when I go out, but sometimes I just, I just can't be civilized. As a matter of fact, I was with Dr. Price at this particular 
a restaurant just this past Friday. We're sitting there. And he raved about his dish. Oh, this is so good, Michael. This is the best dish like this I've ever had in my life. I'm saying, well, praise God. Because if you ain't happy, I'm not going to be happy. And we're going to turn this joint upside down. To, <laughs> that's just the way I feel about my man and God. Amen. Amen. So they brought my meal out, and I was enjoying it as well. And so when Doc finished, he just kind of pushed his plate back. Well, I wouldn't finish, but I wanted to appear to be civilized, <laughs> you know, because I, I, had, I had a dish that you could put your hand in it. And then, and then it, it, was, it was baptized in this little kind of sauce that I was <laughs> And I just wanted to pick the thing up. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, 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 uh, after, after I couldn't get it, like I wanted to get it, you know, I, I turned and asked the lady, I said, do you, do you have, uh, something I can, I can take this home with me? Dr. Prince like, you, <laughs> and the lady said, what about you? Now he had a bunch of his food left. He, he eats just like a little portion in there. Oh, that was delicious. I, I've had enough. I'm like, I can't stand you, for real. I mean, he ordered ice cream and, and took one scoop out of it, tasted it, and said, oh, this is delicious, man. That was so good. And pushed it away. I said, eat the doggone ice cream, man, so I can be uncivilized, too. I, I, took, I took my box home. He left it. I'm carrying <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to Don, the armor bearer. I said, hey, Don, carry this. I ain't want to look like <laughs> So I carried that thing home, man. As a matter of fact, I just saved it because we got right on the plane. And when I got home, I sat there with that thing. And ooh, how many of y'all know I sucked it? <laughs> But the girl packaged it so well, it was just, it didn't spill out or anything. It, it was, it was, it was just packaged right and everything. I mean, she conveniently packaged the whole thing so I can take it home and it wasn't about, you know how you can get some stuff and you take it in and they didn't, and it spill out or that. I mean, it wasn't messy or anything. Cause once it spill out, you know, I know some of y'all just go in to eat it anyway, but I, I can't stand nasty around me. so. It was, it was, well, here's my point. <laughs> my job is to conveniently package this word so you can have carry and take home packages. Uh, you can get it at home and it's so simple and you got all the ingredients of it right there where you can really suck on this word when you get home. Turn to your lips and pastor will teach anything that they nailed down. So did you get Hebrews? Yes. Four, uh, because there, this is what we've been on, and there's this rest that we've entered into as far as the ministry is concerned, Reg. We have, we, we got this rest going on, and it's important that every one of you understand this rest, and you take it home, and you apply this rest in your homes where everybody who is in your house and who comes over to visit can sense the rest of God in your house. I'm talking about where angels can reside and not feel out of place. People come to our house and want to stay. It is ridiculous. Like, you give them all kind of hints. You know, when you look at somebody, look at their watch three and four times while you're sitting there talking, you, you all just get a hint. Like, they're just trying to tell you it's, it's time for you to go. And then I remember one time they didn't go, they didn't get this hint. So I'm like, <laughs> so you go to yawn a couple of times looking at your watch. They were playing this game. They had word picture or whatever. They said, Pastor, you want to play? I said, yeah, I do. Spirit of God, give me something good, boy. And so I got up and, and I drew this traffic signal light. <laughs> and I pointed to the red part, the top light. They said, uh, a red, red. I said, uh, it's stop, stop. And I pointed to the amber, the, the yellow. 
<clears throat> and slow down. No, 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 no. Then I pointed to the bars. They said, green, green. I, no, 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 no. They said, go. And then, and then I drew a house. They said, house, go house. No, 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 no. Go, go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the heck out of this joint, man. But you want your homes like that. And especially those of you who have teenage sons and daughters. You don't want them like me. Like when I said, when I get old enough, I'm out of this joint. Man, my kids are in the environment so now it's like, boy, they don't ever want to leave my house. Have you ever been in the spot where, you know, you just, you couldn't wait to move? Like, mom, I'm telling you, when I get old enough, I'm out of here. And I went away. My mother and father didn't have a clue of where I was. I left. I left. And you don't want to raise, have an environment that's such for your children where they feel so smothered and they feel so, so controlled and they feel so suppressed. They feel, I mean, all of these kind of things. You want the love of God. Ooh, this is strong upon me. I release the love of God into your homes in balance and in wisdom and in peace and in stature and in proper structuring that comes out of the word of God. So this is important. It is necessary for every last one of us to embrace this rest. This rest, the spirit of God has given me this acronym is blessed my life. Rest is officially now releasing every single thing. Releasing every single thing. Say that. Rest. rest. My, rest. My rest. God's rest, God's rest. In, me in me is, is releasing. releasing. Come on, finish it. Every. Thing. Now that is a carefree life. Now, I want you to begin to check people. Now, we're the nicest people in the body of Christ, but you have to check them. And when you check them, I need you to check them nicely because it's a proclivity in this, in this society that we live in. It's a propensity, proclivity, whatever the case may be. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's done uh, uh, routinely that when people are departing your presence, they give you this... this uh, farewell statement like take care take care of yourself now ladies and gentlemen like she has retired years ago i officially retired from taking care of myself i am now an official care caster i don't take care once upon a time i did i no longer take it now i cast care and I don't cast some of my care, the care I can handle. I cast all my care. Because if we're going to do what the Word has commanded us to do, he says, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Ooh, that, that's shouting stuff. Some of y'all don't know how to hear and know when to shout based upon what you've heard. Okay, so I'll help you with that. Shout, he cares for me. He cares. Now, can you shout about that? Hallelujah. Yes. Maybe, and I don't have time to get into the depth of his care for you, but let me just tell you this. He went to hell for yes. you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Jesus went to hell for me to prove his care for me. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. So it is imperative. And it is, it, is, it is necessary for every last one of us to get a hold of this rest, know about the care. So I cast cares and release every single thing. I, I, I'm going to tell you something. It's, it's amazing because my doctor looked at me the other day. He, could, he thought something was wrong with the machine and that kind of thing, but he was calibrating his blood pressure machine and his oxygen That's machine. Good. My stuff was coming up just so weird, man. I mean, it was extremely low. Like, my blood pressure was like 119 over 72 or something like that. I, and my heart rate was like 59 and 61. He said, that's an athlete's heart rate. And I said, you know, I, I, I make it do what it do, baby. <laughs> 
but it comes from not taking on. Most pastors, man, uh, more pastors this year in the last past 365 days have committed suicide in this entire century. They, they're putting, and one of them sat in my house, actually, the day before he went home. I tried to talk to him and minister to him, but that enemy jumped on that boy so bad, he went home, put, got drunk, and put a, put a bullet in his head. Wow. Just can't do life. And life, if you don't know how to do it, y'all yeah, jumped in on that one, boy. <laughs> I believe I got a witness out there. Won't life do it? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Ah! With the heartache and the hardship and the disappointment and the confusion and the, all the things that exist in this world, you better know God. Yes. You better know. That's, that's where she got that song. Life is better. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Because yes. it's enough to cause you to almost lose your mind. Yes, sir if you don't have something bigger than yourself to run to. So he's given us this rest. Even in the midst of all of this confusion, all of us can stand assured that if God be for us. Now, this rest is releasing every single thing, and you're going to have to learn how to do that every single day of your life because this Hebrew spore talks about laboring to enter into the rest. So now it's work to rest. It's a conundrum. It's an oxymoron because why would you have to work the rest? Well, it takes the process of understanding the word and relishing the revelation or the reality of the revelation of his word and stop rehearsing the rejection that comes from the reality of this world. And so if you and I, if we can stand in the position of embracing and relishing and, 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 and holding on to the revelation that we have of God's word. That's what kept me through this whole episode. When they didn't know what was going on with me, God knew. And because he knows all things and he constantly watches over his word to perform it and he's always perfect. See, you got to change out the information you come in here with that you are bombarded in, the, in our society, in this world, you got to change that information out with the Word of God. Yeah. I used an illustration on yesterday. I had a dark glass of water. I polluted it with a tea bag, and I just took bottles of water, and I kept pouring it in that glass. And don't you know that that dark, polluted water, after I kept pouring more water into that glass and more water in that glass, that dark stuff filled out or spilled out and that clear stuff filled in. It's just like bringing your life in here. This good stuff to me, boy. This the, come on, turn to your neighbor and say, suck on it, suck on it, man. This good stuff. So this rest now, okay, we said it's releasing every single thing, but the rest is, it is a complete unfeigned trust. It is a complete unfeigned confidence or trust in the word of God. Uncontaminated, not polluted in any respect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where you know your hope is built. Now, now, if the indicators of this non-rest dwells in you, you still have work to do. What are the indicators? Fear, uncertainty, doubt, disbelief. You're not settled, antsy, uh, anxious. All of these things are indicators. When you get bad news, are you able to still be settled? That's good. We talked about Jesus being on the hinder. I'm, man, I'm teaching so good in here today, boy. I'm just feeling that this is good. Just receive what you all receive. This is a faith-filled and fertile atmosphere. Jesus is on the hinder part of the ship, uh, uh, Pastor Reynolds, and the Bible says he already gave the word to go over to the other side. He said, let us go over the other side. Now, anytime Jesus gives a word, he is not just talking. When he said, let us go over the other side, he didn't think 
that we were going to get halfway and be disrupted. He said, let's go to the other side. He didn't say, let's go halfway and be interrupted by a storm and see what we can do from there. No, he said, let us go to the other side. Him knowing all things knew that the storm was coming and he went into the hinder part. The belly of the ship sat down there and the Bible said he went to sleep and laid his head on the pillow. All the other disciples up jumping around, that kind of thing. They run smack dab into a storm. And man, this storm is beating this boat back and forth until the scripture says water poured over into the boat. Now, it ain't no problem with water beating on the boat. But when water started pouring in the boat, Houston, we have a problem. And so, and so when they discovered now this water, Jesus is still asleep. They go down and wake him up. The nerve of him. See, he's in this rest knowing that the word he, oh man, what the word that he gives you from the beginning is the word that you better hold on to throughout the process. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The same voice you heard before the storm, you got to listen to in the storm. Don't go try to change voices in the midst of a storm. As a matter of fact, the storm is designed to throw you off what he said. So you'll never have an encounter with this rest in this process where you'll see the spirit of God move on your behalf because the work has already been done. I told you your job is to believe in, trust in, take hold to the finished work of his job. And his job has already been done. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, if he was asleep, I would have done just what the Word was doing because we know Jesus is the Word. John 1 proves that out in the Scripture. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word. So the Word was asleep. All he had to do, man, look, if Jesus isn't stuck in this storm, I may not have went to sleep, but I wasn't going to wake him up. I, if I was on the ship, I said, Pete, I ain't waking them up. I ain't waking the man up. You, you know, somebody you respect, if they sleep, <laughs> like if my father was asleep, don't you dare. You would have to have a signed document from the president of the United States to go in there food with him or, or permission from your mother. Hey, mom, dad sleep. Well, wake him up then, baby. I just wanted to make sure it was all right so I can put this on you if he come up. <laughs> hey, Daddy, what? Why are you in here bothering me, boy? Wake him up. Mama. <laughs> I would have laid right there next to him. I may have had, because the Bible says watch as well as pray. I may have had one. <laughs> I may have had one eye open, but I wouldn't have woken him up. I'm telling you. And you're going to have to get in that same position. See it. When the word has told you to calm down, mm, you get right by that word and you settle your, and it's work. It's going, uh, and I told you about the things you do. You pray in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost, if you're not spirit-filled, you are not with the cutting advantage, cutting edge advantage that you are supposed to have in life because praying in the Holy Ghost builds you up on your most holy faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So once we've entered into this rest, the scripture says there's a promise that remains for the children of God to have his rest. It remains, and I'm going to show you how much it, it remains. I, I can get this out before. Okay, 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 put your finger in Hebrews 4 and go to Galatians chapter number 3. I'll go through this as fastly as I can. Is fastly a word? No. <laughs> it sounds like it was a word. As fast as I can. That's all you have to do, right? You don't have to say fastly. Well, you can say fastly as fastly is not a word. And I'm not a dog on English teacher either. <laughs> I'll botch up the English language, man. That's why I wondered for a long time why God called me. I can barely even speak, man. It bothers me sometimes. I see these pontificators <laughs> that stand so articulate and alliteration, the human hermeneutics and, and hermeneutics and homiletics. I, I put all that together, then. And they sound so eloquent. And here, here go, here go Mike Freeman. Turn down for what? You know? 
But you know what I found out? If you do you like God has called you to do, how in the heck Bishop T.D. Jakes calling me to come to speak at his conference? You understand what I'm saying? The big boys go to his conference. Well, I know, I know now, I know that's right. I'm going on this side. <laughs> What's all this for? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See why I gotta do all that stuff. And this year, you're going to have to start right, watch this, stay right, and finish right, relative to your hearing me. And just because things are bad right now, doesn't mean that they're going to be bad forever. And the enemy doesn't want you to get a glimpse of another day, a day where you are thriving and uh, flourishing and having all your needs met. He doesn't want you to see that. But I got good news for you. He who has begun a good work in you. And all of it starts with your heart. Say, my heart. Don't be concerned how people will respond to you. You do what's in your heart. Dr. Mike teaches us that life is a series of decisions that you need to make, and if you make good decisions after another, you're going to live the good life. To order this six-disc CD or DVD set, call 1-888-630-4540. Again, that's 1-888-630-4540, or visit www.spiritoffaith.org. Put your foot down and say, okay, I tripped out yesterday. I lost it yesterday. Okay, God, I apologize. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy that you're not holding me to my yesterday. You are resetting a new day because mercies are a new Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. If you're ever in the Washington or Baltimore metropolitan areas, we invite you to worship with us at one of our Saturday evening or Sunday morning services. Please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540.